Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Whitaker, I'm, I'm glad to see that we have a proposed rule here. Uh, we've been waiting on it for a long time. I serve on the Transportation Committee, and uh, we've been pushing for this. So I'm, I'm excited to see this. And I think it does allow uh, a large class of operations that heretofore have not been able to operate. But uh, Mr. Wynn, can you talk about the, the types of uh, commerce that won't be facilitated by this rule? particularly the requirement that at all times there has to be a, an operator that's got visual line of sight to the drone. Can you talk about s some of the and some of the applications that can't be practiced because of that rule? Well, the easy one is Mr. Meisner's, uh, w the, the, the application he was talking about earlier, that does require uh, beyond visual line of sight. Uh, there is uh, all manner of inspections that I was mentioning as well. Uh, BNSF was, was mentioned earlier, being able to check for split rails in advance of trains, uh, other infrastructure, et cetera. Um, and, and just if, if you imagine one of the early applications, uh, early adopters of this technology will be agricultural uh, interests, farmers, et cetera, looking to do all manner of inspection of their property. Uh, some of these farms are large, of course, and, and Someone could easily be flying over their property, but have that well beyond line of sight. Uh, again, being basically flying a pattern that, that a computer is controlling, uh, very low altitude. So these are uh, the types of, of operations that we think, uh, some of them are more complex than others. We, we think that there's a way to advance the technology, to, to test the technology. The more we're, we're flying, uh, again, equivalent level of safety to the current aircraft system, uh, air, airspace system that we have today. The more data we can collect, the more we can test technologies like detect and avoid, sense and avoid, et cetera. Uh, and there, there are a number of those things, low-hanging fruit, so to speak. So, um, Mr. Whitaker, is there any chance before this rule comes out uh, to have a category of drones that are authorized in, in low-risk situations like agriculture or power line inspection or rail inspection? Is there a chance to get something in the rule for that, that category? Well, what we've, what we've done while the rule is pending is we issue, issue exemptions, and we've done over 600 exemptions for commercial operators, and we've done uh, even more than that for public sector operations, for fire and rescue, that type of thing. The rule, as you mentioned, will take care of a very large subset of operations and will allow a lot more commercial innovation without our involvement. We've tried to include in the rule uh, the issues where we think we have a clear understanding of the safety risks and how they can be mitigated, the issues that are outside of the rule, like beyond of sight, we think we'll get there, and we're going to try to get there as quickly as we can, but there are still technology issues and standards that have to be developed. So we will have to work very diligently to keep that moving as the rule progresses. All right, thank you. Um, on to the, the privacy aspect of this, it, it does present some new challenges. One question that I have is uh, should there be a floor? I mean, we're talking about a ceiling of 500 feet. Should there be a floor for operation of drones? Do you own the property an inch above your lawn um, is a question that I have. If you have a gate, a locked gate on your property and somebody climbs over the gate, your expectation is they are violating your privacy. What if they fly over the gate? And what if they're hovering an inch above the ground? Uh, Mr. Geiger, could you talk to that from a personal property aspect? When, is your, when, is your, when are your property rights being violated? So you, courts have generally said that you own a reasonable amount of airspace above your property. Um, the 400 foot level is more or less arbitrary. Um, an inch above your property, yeah, you probably own that. Um, 30 feet above your property, not sure. And uh, what counts as reasonable, again, as more and more uh, UAS fill the sky, uh, in, in tens, hundreds of thousands, which is the, the, what we predict in the, next, in the coming decades, uh, what counts as reasonable will probably shrink. And it's, it's not clear what the floor will be, um, but generally, if uh, you, you, can, you have an expectation of uh, property ownership and as much airspace as you can use, and so the, uh, the, the drone would have to uh, violate your, or reduce a substantial interest or use in your property in order to uh, uh, be liable for a trespass claim. Maybe the floor is the uh, range for number 12 gauge with six shot in it. 
You know, it's interesting that you bring that up because uh, the concept of shooting down drones, I think, demonstrates the depth of concern that people have. And this is a privacy-based concern with drones. Now, this, this happens on a pretty regular basis, right? I mean, just in two weeks ago, uh, there were firefighters that were uh, tending to a house fire, and in the aftermath of that house fire, used their hose to spray a drone that was watching them. And the drone was not directly over them, so it wasn't like a safety issue, but it was watching them. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely not condoning that type of activity. I think that it's very risky, but it demonstrates the need for uh, the, the depth of co public concern regarding privacy, and I think the need for a baseline. So maybe we need rules of engagement in terms, of <laughs> in addition to rules of privacy. I see my time's expired. I yield back. Thank you, uh, Mr.